Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm starting my day off with Honey, the pastel pie ball ball python. You might ask why. Well, the fact is, is that we're about to cut a clutch that was actually fathered by a pastel pie ball ball python, but the female was an Enchi head pie. So we could produce some pretty cool stuff. So for you guys that like egg cutting, we've got a clutch because you know, pie balls are just one of the most spectacular snakes and I'm praying that we produce something really cool. So wish me luck on that one. Let's push our problem aside, go jump into cutting this clutch of eggs and uh, again, uh, hopefully we'll have some amazing odds. And I am really excited about this clutch because the pairing was absolutely wonderful. Mama was actually this Enchi Het for Pie Ball Ball Python. And she was bred to this Ripper Pastel Pie. And you guys know how much pies mean to me. Pies are one of the most amazing animals in the world as far as I'm concerned. And so it really kind of started my passion for ball pythons way back when I was younger. So the fact is we could potentially, the best animal in here could be a pastel Enchi Pie Ball Ball Python. But let's just hope we get some pies and some pastel pies and all kinds of stuff. We've only got four eggs, so you know the odds aren't great, but the fact is is that because the male was a pastel pie, 50% should be pies. Let's go ahead and just jump into egg number one. And right off the rip, we're gonna find out if we've got a pie to start, and I can see light. Light usually tells me that there's a pie, but let's just see. Yes, it is a pie, it sure is. And this is definitely a pastel pie. I don't know if it's an entry pastel pie. I'm gonna just pop around just a little teeny bit in here. I tell you what, this might be a pastel enchi pie. I think we might have hit the pastel enchi pie on the first break. Oh my God, nevertheless, we hit a pie, we hit a pastel pie, and I'm pretty sure it's an enchi pastel pie. Wow, I tell you what, that is epic. Now we got three more eggs. I hope we have at least one more pie, uh, but at this point, I'm happy with what I got because that is an absolute ripper. So let's jump into egg number two. All right, let's go. I love it. I am so happy that we've got a little Pie ball ball pies on there. Let's see what we got here. Another pie! Oh my gosh, another pie! Another pie, and uh, this one looks like, I can't tell, I think this is an Enchi pie. I don't think this is a pastel. It's a little hard to tell, but we did get two pies already, and it looks like at least this one is at least Enchi. Pretty sure it's just Enchi. I don't know that it's pastel, but wow! Until this hatches, we don't know, but these are cool too, because both these look at about 50% white. You know, pie balls can be 50% white, 20% white, 90% white, could be all kinds of different things. These are, these are my favorites, that are about like 50 to 70% white, so you have that contrast. Oh my gosh, two more eggs. Woo! Tell you what, this is awesome. Let's go ahead and do egg number three. I'm not gonna get greedy here, guys, but another pie would certainly make my day. Doesn't look like it's a pie, already I can see. And right here, and weirdly enough, this is literally just a het pie. It's not a pastel, it's not an enchi, it's just a normal het pie, which is kind of weird. One more egg, come on. Oh, my gosh, my heart rate is up, I am so excited. Let's go ahead and see what this last egg has. Come on, one more pie, one more pie, one more pie. Oh, no, no, doesn't look like, maybe, I don't know. Uh, no, it isn't a pie, but, it is a pastel enchi that is 100% hat for pie. So it's still a really cool animal. So we had to get a pastel enchi hat for pie. We got a hat for pie. We got two pies. One looks like a pastel enchi pie. The other looks like an enchi pie. I tell you what, guys, I would say that's still a pretty darn good successful clutch. Just a little mango update. Remember, we actually broke his tail off when he got behind the backdrop and stuff like that. I was so absolutely bummed out. You can see how much his tail has grown back. Sure, it doesn't look the same. It's kind of like a black tail instead of the whole kind of ridge tail and stuff like that. Nevertheless, we're pretty confident that he's gonna have a full tail, even if it does look a little bit wonky. It's just amazing when tails start to regenerate on the iguanas or leopard geckos or whatever, how quickly they do it. But nevertheless, Mango is amazing. He's a puppy dog tame animal and I uh, absolutely love this little monkey. Down in the dungeon, that only means one thing. Egg time, egg time. Egg time. And the first clutch that we have down here today is actually this beautiful mahogany ball python right here. I love the mahogany. It's actually an incomplete dominant. It. The super version is basically an all black ball python. Absolutely gorgeous. And this was actually bred to a chocolate mahogany. So we could get actually sumas, which are the super, and they could be chocolates as well. So suma chocolates would be pretty absolutely cool. Let's go ahead and pull her off. She's not a big girl, so I'm not expecting a lot of eggs, but nevertheless, beautiful eggs, really good. Fertility is great. Mama was really good protecting her eggs. So we'll go ahead and get these eggs out over here. Like I said, beautiful, big, white, 
pearly, beautifully shaped eggs. Should have some beautiful babies. Two, four, five eggs. Again, on average, one in four could be a super, would be the suma. And again, the chocolate is mixed in there. So with five eggs, who knows what you can get? You gotta remember, odds work in a way that if it's one in four, that means every egg has a 25% chance of producing a suma. So if I cut four eggs with no suma, still the last egg only has a 25% chance. Or on the other side, if I cut four eggs and all of them were super sumas, uh, the fifth egg still has a 25% chance. So who knows? Maybe there's five Suma chocolates in this clutch. This next clutch is actually one of those possible head sunset clutches. The ones that I cut the last time that might actually have sunsets. And again, they're possible, possible heads. Bred to a scaleless possible head sunset. So again, long shots can definitely produce scaleless. That would be possible, possible head sunset. Or I could produce scaleless sunsets or even sunsets from this clutch. Hey, one day we're gonna hit them. I promise you, one day we will hit that gene again and it'll be an amazing day and we'll celebrate together, right? This girl is wrapped tight around these eggs. It's every now and then you get a female that just really does not want to let go. So I have to just slowly unwind her, but she is really on this clutch of eggs right here. So, okay, we got her off. We had one little egg over here that we're going to candle just rolled off. It looks like this egg also kind of got rolled around. So we'll candle those two eggs. The rest of the eggs look really nice. We'll go ahead and pull these over here. Looks really good. Again, a beautiful clutch. Two, four, six, eight, beautiful eggs. Again, we'll candle these two eggs up, get them in the incubator, and 57 days from now, we're going to find out if we have sunsets or not. Like I said, I think we have one or two more clutches total, so I think there was three total of the year that we could potentially produce, and if we don't hit it, we'll just keep on trying until we do. You guys know that we're always trying to improve here at the Reptarium and everything. I want to introduce you to the newest member. Hey, Morgan, what's Hi. going on? Now, Morgan, of course, is going to head up our educational side. So uh, the virtual tours, which are five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and an hour, you're going to be seeing a lot. Are you excited about it? Yes, I'm very excited. I know. She's really good. As a matter of fact, she did a virtual tour for me the other day. She did great. I think you guys are going to love it. And don't worry. I'm going to pop in, too. But uh, you kind of come from a rich history of, like, loving animals. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I've loved animals my my whole life. I recently got my bachelor's in biology at CMU. I've worked at the Philadelphia Zoo for a summer. I also did wildlife rehabilitation for a summer. So yeah, a lot of animal stuff. That's awesome. So we are super excited to have her on. Great attitude. She's always happy. She's always passionate about the animals. So you'll definitely be seeing her in the vlog and as well on the tours, in-person tours, all that stuff. So go ahead, thereptarium.com. Go ahead, email her. I think it's what, tours at thereptarium.com? Yeah. So the email's tours at thereptarium.com or you can just email us at thereptarium.com. You'll hear from Morgan, get you guys uh, uh, in the rhythm here, right? It'll be really amazing. So I can't wait to see what you yeah. do. Excited for the future. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Got a couple little spotted python clutches that just hatched out today. I had mentioned how we're having a really good year with spotted and children's and all the Stimpsons, all that type of stuff. Just look how cool these things are. Again, the spotted pythons are kind of the darker ones, have definitely much more kind of defining spots on them. They're called maculosa actually. and uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, and there's some polymorphism in there for sure. Different animals, just kind of cool. This clutch was really good because it had really high contrast. I mean, there's even got this one here that has some kind of cool barring on it and stuff like that. Definitely really cool. This one has a little bit of striping towards the back right over there. So pretty cool little animals. Again, pygmy pythons from Australia. Uh, had a banger of a year. I mean, I tell you what, I am so excited that we did so well with them. Again, we'll get these guys set up. And we'll get them eating here within the, hopefully the next eight or 10 days. Now the second clutch actually I'll just show you really quick. There's only two actual babies in it. We had three eggs, one egg went bad. This is what a bad egg looks like, by the way. And uh, and then we had two little babies that hatched out here. So just a bunch more spotted pythons to put on the shelf. And uh, hopefully the first ones I think are now feeding. So they'll go on the website pretty soon. These guys probably take another three, four weeks, something like that. But uh, again, great year with the pygmy pythons from Australia. Well, it looks like there's a chance we may be sending our yearling alligators back to Gatorland as early as this week. The big question I have is, how am I going to ship these things? Like I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you know, when they're a year old and they're like half the size, it's not that bad, but they've gotten really big because of the whole shutdown thing and us having to keep them for an extra four months. I literally don't know how we're going to ship these back. We've got six pretty good size alligators that somehow have to be bagged up, put in a box and shipped down safely. Um, 
Fingers crossed I'm gonna to have to figure it out. I think maybe a wood crate will work. I'm not sure. Definitely gonna to have to put my brain to this one, but these guys will be going back. We're bummed because we love them to death. But then the little guys can go into this enclosure, which is amazing, because these guys are really just getting way too big for this enclosure. One more clutch to cut today, and this is kind of a weird one. I'm not gonna to lie to you. Mama was this yellow belly ball python here. She was bred to this Silver Streak Bamboo Woma, as well as this Mojave Calico Bumblebee. We don't know, three eggs, doesn't give me a lot to go on here, so let's hope that there's just some killer babies, no matter who the dad is. Uh, I'm nervous, because this could be a complete whip, or we could hatch out some crazy stuff. So let's just go ahead and see what we get. And let's go ahead and see what we got in this first egg. Okay, oh, weird. All right, whoa, that is weird. Okay, this makes sense. This is a spider of some sort, maybe a spider calico, maybe a spider yellow belly. So this tells me the Mojave calico bumblebee is the father to this egg here. Again, you can have dual father clutches, right? So, but each egg has to be fathered by one clutch. Usually once there's one father, most of them are fathered by the same one. So I'm assuming we have a yellow belly bred to a Mojave calico bumblebee. Let's see the next couple eggs, you ready? All right, there could be some really cool combinations with this breeding if that so is the father. And right off the rip, this is a weird one too. This looks like a Mojave spider yellow belly. So that's a really pretty snake, it really is. No calico in this one and no pastel in it, but that's a beautiful snake. Really heavy flaming up the sides. This is gonna be a beauty when it hatches out. So we definitely know two eggs are fathered by that Mojave calico bumblebee. One last egg. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. One more egg. Okay, well, it looks like we definitely have a... Ooh, whoa, whoa, wait a second here. I think this is actually it. I think we actually have a Mojave... Uh, you know, we, I don't think we hit the calico. So it looks like we have a Mojave pastel spider yellow belly. I think something like that. Until it hatches out, I'm not sure. So we hit almost all genes. The only thing we missed on this clutch, we didn't hit one calico at all, which is a little bit of a bummer because that calico gene is really cool. But this last egg definitely was the best egg of the clutch. So all in all, we had some banger clutches to cut today. That was pretty awesome. Guess what time it is? Egg time. And we're gonna start with this granite Mex Mex. Of course, this is what they would call a San Luis Potosi king snake. The reason why they call them Mex Mex is they're actually a Lampropeltis Mexicana Mexicana. So Mex Mex is just an easier way than saying San Luis Potosi, but an absolutely wonderful animal. And again, this is a kind of a recessive mutation that they call granite. Uh, this is kind of a low expression one. We produce some really crazy granite stuff as well. Looks like a beautiful clutch of eggs for a second clutch. She laid a really good first clutch too. So she has two, four, six beautiful eggs. So that's good. I think the first clutch was eight eggs. So 14 eggs this year for that girl. Can't wait till these babies hatch out because they are adorable. Next up, we actually have a second clutch from a Pueblin milk snake. Uh, let's see what's going on again. Fertility has been really good. And usually when I say that, I'm jinxing myself. So fingers crossed for, oh yes, beautiful clutch eggs. You know what? I have to be honest with you. She's not done yet. We're going to go ahead and just set her back in there. She's going to uh, have one or two eggs left in her and I don't want to disturb her so I'm just gonna set her back like this close the enclosure like that and we'll collect those eggs either later today or tomorrow leave her alone so she doesn't egg bound look like she had one maybe even two eggs left so uh, we'll leave her and uh, we'll collect those later on I tell you what this year's shaping up to be amazing some good odds some bad odds but today was good odds on that pie clutch oh my god I cannot wait till those guys hatch out and so you guys can see them. it's gonna be absolutely amazing if you enjoyed this video here's a playlist of all kinds of egg cutting I know you guys love that could you do me a favor please too can you support my podcast channel right up here you can subscribe it's called checking in we have a podcast every wednesday and friday on this side you can actually subscribe to the vlog channel here turn your post notifications on if you don't mind have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow